This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 88 of the Wisdom by Wessa show on the Horse Radio Network. This is Mike Donnell. I'm Casey Wilbanks Coletti. And this is Sofia Aguila. Welcome to Wisdom by Wessa on the Horse Radio Network. This podcast is brought to you by the Western and English Sales Association. WESA, which provides the world's largest trade events for retailers, manufacturers, and sales representatives of the equestrian industry. In this podcast, we feature exclusive interviews with noteworthy Western and English personalities, retailers, and exhibitors who you've always wanted to talk to. Don't miss out on all the news for manufacturers and retailers in the equine industry. Sophia is here with us today as usual, my favorite part of the show. Well... This is one of my favorite parts. It's always fun to have the guests too, right, Sophia? (laughs) I guess I know where I stand. (laughs) Mike, you've always been my favorite. You know that. (laughs) Anyways, we cover news and updates for the retailers and exhibitors. But what's new directly at WESA, Sophia? We have recently added a new advocacy partner that is Western Justice. They are being added to our existing partners, uh, for example, West Trust, The Pony Club, National Little Bridges Rodeo Association, and Future Farmers of America. What is the mission of the new advocacy partner? So Western Justice is an organization that helps to preserve and protect, but also to unite the Western heritage through political action. And then besides the new partner, another update is that we also have the exhibitor contract deadline coming up. In fact, it is tomorrow, Monday, May 16th. And again, a last reminder, once you submit the first part of the contract online at westsidetreasure.com, just take a few minutes to flip through the additional offers that are available on there. Um, Those will help you to stand out and you really don't want to miss those. Nine Gray Horses started out as a Western retailer with a goal of featuring American-made Western clothing and tack and supporting small-town America. The initial investment was the horse trailer, which was totally remodeled into a mobile showroom, which Taylor McCann and her mother, Carolyn Lyon, take to Western events in the eastern U.S. to market their wares. However, Nine Gray Horses is a living example of Western retailing meets modern marketing technology as the business's presence on social media like TikTok has significantly broadened their sales base. Taylor and Carolyn join us today to tell us their story and for those who are intrigued how the business got its name. Hey, Taylor McCann, Carolyn Lyon, thank you so much for joining us on the Wisdom by Wessa podcast. Yeah, thank Thanks you guys so much, so much for having us. us. I think it's going to be a great show. There's a lot to talk about. I want to start maybe somewhere a little bit different. I happen to be a really big believer in companies having names that are intriguing and easy to remember. I want to get into everything that Nine Gray Horses does, but everybody in the back of their mind can say, Nine Gray Horses, what does that mean? Are they selling horses too? Give us the background on Nine Gray Horses, and then we'll talk about what you do. Um, Yeah, so nine has been a lucky number for us for many years. I was actually born on April 9th, and I think that's kind of how it started. Um, And I, oddly enough, my first ever horse was a gray horse, and then it just so happened that every single one after that happened to be gray. Um, So nine gray horses has kind of been, we won our lucky number nine gray horses, and I included it in my wedding vows, and it just kind of stuck. We were trying to think of a unique name, and, you know, you hear the same things over and over again, and, you know, we just brainstormed a lot. Little does Taylor know, her dad and I were married on the ninth. I'm sure she knows that, but, you know, so nine goes way back to even before she was born, and, you know, we came up with the nine gray horses, and it stuck. Well, and I think it's a great name. Uh, It catches people's attention. When I saw the background, I thought, I've got to ask how this name came from. Now all of our listeners understand, and that's truly a really kind of a unique start to a unique company. So why don't you chat with us a little bit about what the philosophy was when you started. And then I know you've uh, got a mobile marketplace. I know you're a big believer in social media, but we'll let the two of you uh, just kind of talk us through from the original idea of where Nine Gray Horses is today or are today. Um, yeah, so- what do I say? <laughs> 
<laughs> so we actually um, started out, we started back in 2020 um, and on the East Coast. And I mean, as very far east as you can get, we're based out of uh, Milford, Delaware. And there is not many Western boutiques or Western shops around here. So it was a big need that we felt in our area. Um, one thing, you know, we wanted to promote people being confident in the things that they were wearing. And I felt most confident when I was, you know, wearing Western fashion, but it was hard for me to try on in person. Um, and we wanted to be size inclusive. So that's kind of where we started actually was just your run of the mill, as we say, like Western plus size inclusive boutique. And then, um, after honestly COVID and all, we saw a lot of small businesses struggling and we kind of thought to ourselves, what could we do to help other small businesses? And that came along with a rebrand to carrying USA made uh, products and making it a focus on really carrying and supporting other small businesses. And that's kind of where we went with it. So talk a bit about your trailer. Yeah. So we actually remodeled. It's a 1995. It's a big Valley. Um, it started out that it had a little weekender in it and it had a mid tack and a four horse and we knocked down all the walls and, um, mom and myself, my husband, and my dad, we all put labor of love and turning galvanized tin into the ceiling. And we really turned it into a boutique on wheels that people can come and shop and, you know, feel like you're walking into a show or into a store when you're at a horse show or whatever event we may be set up at. We also kind of like the element of surprise, so we didn't redo anything on the outside of the trailer. So if you see this trailer, you know, from the outside without our banners on it, you know, it kind of looks like an old blue faded trailer. And then you walk in doors and everyone's like, wow, <laughs> you've really, you know, it looks like a house that has been redone in rustic. Yeah, I'm a little bougie, so we went all out with, you know, we have trim that's like metallic copper and rose gold, and um, it, it sparkles in there, and it, and it definitely does not look like the rusty outside. You might well, have to give Mike a definition on bougie. Mike, do you know what bougie means? I wasn't going to say that I had no idea what she was talking about. I'm just helping you out. I appreciate that. Um, We're getting into your area, Casey. You like the bling and the colors and all of that. and you Are you uh, saying I'm bougie? I have no idea. You may be. <laughs> I really, I really couldn't tell you. Uh, maybe I don't want to know. But anyway, um, because you, you know, Casey is of the two. She is much more the fashionista. She <laughs> likes to talk about clothes. She likes to buy clothes. She likes to wear clothes. She appreciates design. I'm going to let her talk a little bit about uh, uh, what you've done inside and the lines you carry. Uh, and then I want to talk a bit about marketing uh, and about what you told me, Taylor, about TikTok. But let's hold yeah. that later in the show. <laughs> I do like to wear clothes, Mike. Thank, thanks for <laughs> letting them know. <laughs> First of all, I go to your website and I'm just like, wow, I love, I love the picture. Um, obviously, we we just got the the motivation behind this picture. Um, you guys kind of explained that, but I'd love to know. I don't even know the right way to say this, but the creative juices that came into to making this graphic that's on your website. It's it's amazing. I love it. Yeah, so we work with a few different um, graphic artists. The person who did our logo was Branded Livestock Im Imagery. Um, and I did a photo shoot with a local equine photographer. And then I honestly just sent her these pictures and I let her run with it. And oh, cool. she came up with the squash blossom behind it. And I mean, she was amazing. Um, we also worked with uh, Pistol Rose Creations and she created one of the other main graphics. Um, and again, it was a picture that the same... Um, equine photographer Madison Berlin uh, photography took around our area and yeah. she took that image and honestly the images are are us they're ourselves and we wanted to portray that in our brand but also in a graphic way that people could yeah. maybe relate to more than just a still image so that's what those graphic designers did they, they really took those oh, images cool. and ran with them I love it I mean we 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 talk to people all the time obviously but this just really stuck it out at me. Um, I want to go straight to the products and, and what you carry. Uh, one of the statements that kind of signifies you guys is make a statement cowgirl and uh, for the, the punchy cowgirls and colored hats. But um, just talk about how you choose the products that you're going to sell. Um, talk about maybe some of your headliners, your favorite products um, uh, or fan favorites, I, I guess. I see sold out items. So we know that people are definitely buying these items. 
So it started out that, you know, we met a lot of other small businesses. We got to meet a lot of the owners. Um, We wanted to go to Westwood and feel the quality of these products in person um, so that we were not only purchasing USA Made, but we were purchasing products that we believed were great quality. Um, And, you know, after we kind of go through all of the temporary setups, it was time we went up to the permanent, uh, the 14th floor, and we did some research beforehand and found out that Kimes Ranch Jeans remain in the USA. We went up there, and I was nervous. As a small business, it's, like, nerve-wracking to go up to these big stores that are set up permanently at the Dallas market, and we went into Kimes Ranch, and they were super busy and packed with appointments, and we kind of got turned away, contact your sales rep after the event. And we stayed for the whole entire time at Wessa. We stayed all the way until Sunday. And if anybody was there this past January, there was a power outage. There was snow in Dallas, which was crazy. And there was also incoming snow in a lot of places. So we were kind of hoping on the fact that maybe some people would have canceled their appointments at Kimes. And we took our butts back up there on Sunday before everything closed and just kind of tried to you know, be bold and make our statement. And um, we secured Kimes Ranch Jeans, which has been pivotal for us. It's not something you can find a lot of in our area, um, especially USA made jeans that people then can try on. We have a ton of people that love their jeans, but don't want to purchase online just because they're not sure of sizing. So that has been um, super pivotal for us just to bring them on as another brand. It's great. I I just love it. And I when I look at your website, I feel like the items that you guys select to carry are just, they're very bold. It's almost like the, each piece tells its own story in a way. Yeah. We certainly That's try. Definitely. We try to pick unique items. Um, uh-huh. Another one of our favorites that was on the 14th floor that uh, wasn't intimidating at all was Double J Saddlery. Mm-hmm. Um, we just got in belts from them, so we were able to custom pick belts that we wanted made and even you know some of the details we could custom customize for nine gray horses so that's exciting that they'll be hitting our website soon too Um, but we try to make sure that all the products that we have are unique and bold and stand out that you can't walk into just any other store any other retailer and pick them out yeah Um, a lot of our shirts have our own graphics on it or graphics that designers have made custom for us and we've been able to purchase for them. So we try to have, be unique and brand ourselves so that you can't go out there and find it in every store that you look in that carries Western items. What's up next for you guys? I'm always amazed by people with such creativity and passion like your, you, yourselves of what's next, what they're looking forward to next. I know some things, you know, people can't tell tell us until it happens, but where are you going? Where, where are you going with this next? Um, I think for us, it's a lot of just empowerment, um, you know, in Western fashion, in the Western community that everybody is welcome, no matter what your size, no matter what your background is. And just finding products that convey that message, whether it's a graphic T-shirt or whether it's a piece of jewelry, um, I think really everything that we do from here on out kind of has that in the back of our mind is this something that's going to empower a single person. It doesn't always have to be a big group of people, but is it going to make one person feel included or is it going to be, you know, a product line that just no matter where you wear it shows support for that. And we have a lot of new graphic tees that are coming out. We have a really exciting photo shoot scheduled in two weeks. Actually, I'll be heading to Oklahoma um, that we're doing that will be bright and bold and exactly that. One of my favorite shirts that we have is, you know, all about that. Uh, I don't know if you've seen any pictures of Taylor, but she's got a bright mint hat um, that everyone always wants to know where she got. So that hat, actually, we call it the queen, and it has its own shirt now that we had someone custom designed for us, and it has three feathers on it, and one feathers the East Coast, one feathers the West Coast, and one's the middle of the United States, and it says different feathers, same hat, that basically we're all inclusive. You know, there's a lot of negativity going out there in the Western world, and we're trying to say that everyone can be included in the Western world. You know, it's it's yeah. not about any one certain genre that you have to be to fit into the Western mold. I was, or I should say, I am known for that hat. I laugh all the time and say that's <laughs> part of my personality now, although I can't wear it. I could, but I don't wear it in my everyday life. But if you see me at an event, I'm generally wearing that hat. Um, I got spotted in Wessa because of that hat. Oh, um, And 
so it was my way that I could also, so that hat was like an exclusive is actually a mess up color. Um, so they don't sell it anymore, but I figured that t-shirt would be a great way that people can have their little own piece of yeah. my hat that so many, so many know. And I got to give a shout out to Zoe from Lasso Your Longhorn. It's another graphic designer we use. And she fully um, came up with that design outside of the color of the hat. And she just had that same message that no matter, you know, what your position is, if you just love to wear Western fashion, if you are a rancher, if, you, you know, if you are out there and you work in ag, that, you know, all of us have a valid place in this Western industry. Sure, definitely room for everybody. I know Mike wants to talk about marketing. Yes, he well, that to. and another question. I mean, you started this in 2020, and it's a runaway success. What did you two do before 2020? And tell, <laughs> tell me about before Nine Gray Horses was created. Were you both in the fashion world or in the clothing world, or what? What led uh, led up to this? Probably a passion of. Uh, to be able to provide these products to people because we had a difficulty finding them because neither one of our backgrounds come from fashion or anything such. Actually, Mom works both. in a school um, and I work in the <laughs> agricultural industry. So we are not fashion people, uh, you know, to our core at all. It was just kind of what we felt we needed in our area. Okay. I just kind of wondered what that was. And we normally talk to retailers about the growing impact of social media and how they're using it or how they're embracing it. But you seem to really have a handle on social media, especially TikTok, which is a uh, a social media platform we don't hear a lot about uh, as we talk to people, but take us a little bit behind the scenes how you've been leveraging TikTok to grow the business. Yeah, so TikTok can be super hard. Um, the algorithms, I'm sure anybody that is on TikTok knows that the algorithm is not always in our favor. I've been messaging back with one of our brand reps and we're just, you know, kind of frustrated at the algorithm and how it doesn't always love you, but it also can be a great tool because it can take just one video blowing up on TikTok that gets you in front of so many people that can, re can create so many orders and traffic to your store just from one video. Um, quality content goes so far on TikTok and it's led us to the point that most of our online sales and 80% of our uh, website traffic come from TikTok itself. Um, it's also helped us create a community of so many people. I did a lot of research when um, we rebranded to USA Made of who our core client was you know, we are bold, we are punchy, as I like to call it. And a lot of those um, people, you know, in our realm of core clients is that, you know, 23 to mid 30 range, and they're on TikTok, and they're, you know, watching TikToks, and they want to feel a connection and see people that are just like them. And again, it was that hat, that, um, that mint hat that I think people look for now and is really known on TikTok. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think, that's, I think that's great, and it's perfectly an example of how if you are aggressive in your marketing and you're watching what is going on in the marketplace, social media is playing a bigger and bigger and a bigger role if you're comfortable with it and if you know how to do it. And I applaud you for taking the time uh, and the effort to leverage TikTok in, in your example because your, your geographic footprint for – you know, for, for your trailer is up and down the East Coast. Your marketplace, yeah. I'm sure, is geographically expanding tremendously just because of something like TikTok. Yeah. And I think one thing, too, that um, was a little different for us is I didn't hop on TikTok and do the trends and do the dances and that kind of stuff. I was um, it was my, it was my face. It was me. It was me talking. It was tours of the trailer. It was behind the scenes stuff. And I think people just really connected with knowing, you know, the person behind the brand and people, I feel like, you know, know me now. It's not like, it's just our brand, but it's myself too. When they see us out in events, they come up and they know me and they ask about things. And I think that's kind of how we use TikTok to create a community of people that wasn't just really based off the trends or whatever, you know, dance was currently happening, but really using it to our advantage. How many events do you take the trailer in an average year? And what do you got coming up? We're doing this in early May. How many places are you going to be before the year's over? Um, so our biggest thing that we have coming up is the American Ranch Horse Association World Show, which is at the World Equestrian Center in Ocala. 
and that starts on July 14th. So we'll be down there for 10 days. Um, so we kind of have, have slowed ourselves down. We are doing about uh, three events a month, and those are generally two-day weekend events um, at this point in time. We slowed ourselves down a bit. That way we can get ready for July. We have a lot of things to build. As you know, it can always rain in Florida, so we need to build something like an overhang for the outside so we can have inventory underneath that. Um, but we're going to a rain cow horse event this coming weekend, and then we have a barrel race that we'll be heading to that's actually local in Delaware that's in June. And then we're always looking to add things to our schedule. But <laughs> once I get through July, we'll start looking at August and all that stuff. Casey, maybe you ought to take your mare to Delaware. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's ready to go. She's ready to go anywhere. It's been so nice talking to you guys today. I just love talking to passionate people. It gives you just motivation. And, and I wish you guys all the success in the future. Yeah, we both do. And in fact, uh, you're focusing on American-made USA products. You're focusing on the Western lifestyle, but you've adopted modern technology to expand that geographically worldwide if you need to. Uh, you've really put the whole thing together and we congratulate you. And it's been a lot of fun talking to you and we'll all be looking. What are you going to do when that hat wears out? Are you going to get another one? Oh man, I don't, my, uh, my man Drake over there at Shorty, he's the one who helped me pick out that hat and he restores some amazingly old hats that are in bad shape. So I'm just going to hope that he can always restore that thing. So I don't think I can live without her at this point. I wouldn't want <laughs> to. Trademark at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, thanks a lot for being with us on the Wisdom by Wessa podcast. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much for honor. having us. And if there's any retailer out there, Wessa, it was pivotal for us. So I highly recommend uh, going if you haven't yet. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, guys. West Trust was established in 2002 as the industry's only benevolent association with a specific goal to assist deserving retailers, manufacturers, and sales reps who find themselves or their families in need due to some unexpected catastrophic or medical circumstance. You can ask for help or join us in contributing to the West Trust Fund. All donations made to West Trust are tax deductible and much appreciated. Contributing to the community and helping people in need has become even easier as West Trust is now on Amazon Smile. When you shop at smile.amazon.com, select Western Endowment Trust Fund as your charity and Amazon will donate to West Trust at no cost to you. You know, we'd love to hear your feedback on the show, and there is a contact link on the website, wisdombywessa.com. The Wisdom by Wessa show will be published on the 15th and 30th of every month. You can listen on most of your favorite podcast players, and you can also listen on the Horse Radio Network app on your iOS or Android phone. You just search Horse Radio Network in the App Store. It's free and super easy to use. Be sure to visit all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Thanks for listening to the Wisdom by Wessa podcast. Wessa, where the industry meets.